Okay. When you uh, when you look at all the Bible characters, including Jesus, you will soon see they all had faith for victory against against great odds. You know, you just start at the beginning and go through the Bible, Abraham, and you think about his life, Moses, Joseph, Gideon, Elijah, Peter, Paul, John. And I, I believe the Bible is telling us that, that this is a battle. That this is a battle that we're in. And the word I use today that the Lord gave me, and it's, 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 a, it's a message of encouragement that what you're going through to hold steady. Whatever you're going through right now, hold steady. It can be a multitude of things. But the word he gave me, against all odds, against all odds, have faith in God. Amen. Against all odds. When it looks absolutely impossible, have faith in God. Because that's what our story is about today. It's about having faith in God. And in the book of John, is that right, I told you to turn? In the book of John, chapter 11. How, how many here today, how many here today know the story of Lazarus and Martha and Mary? Just raise your hand up. How many know that? Real good. Okay, about half. Okay. I'm going to have to read a little lengthy uh, text. Today, because I want you to understand this story. Because this story, if you don't know the story, you don't mean nothing. But it's in John chapter 11. And we're going to start reading in the 21st verse. And you excuse me for a long text today, but I think you need to hear it. It's the story where Jesus has gotten a word from two of his friends, Martha and uh, Mary, that, G uh, that their brother, Lazarus, is sick. Okay? And so instead of coming, he doesn't go, but he stays where he is for another two days. It's not necessarily explained in here why he stayed, but he didn't just run over there. And he was only like 20 miles away, just, just a day's walk actually to get to, to Bethany where, uh, where Lazarus was. And there are several things that go on before he comes onto the scene. But we're picking up the story today in John 11, the 21st verse. Jesus arrives on the scene. I want you to get this because they, they have asked, they sent word, Jesus, Lazarus is sick. Really sick. He's really sick. So he waits two days and now he comes on the scene and Martha meets him. Now it's very interesting the story about Martha and Mary. You've heard so much about Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus and Martha's doing the stuff in the kitchen and, and she's yelling, she's rattling the button hands and thinking, Mary, why aren't you in here helping me? Why are you sitting out there feeding Jesus? But in this story, Martha is really the main character. It's interesting. It's, and it says in the 21st verse, now Jesus arrives on the scene. Get the story. Then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus replies, he says, but even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. That's, that's Martha. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again. Jesus said to her, I'm sorry. Jesus said to her in the 23rd verse, your brother will rise again. And Martha said, Lord, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly, this is interesting, called Mary, her sister, saying, Hey, the teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to Jesus. Now Jesus had not yet come into town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that, Mary rose out quickly and went out following her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet and saying to him, Isn't it interesting? Lord, 
If you had been here, my brother would not have died. How many times have we said that in our life? Lord, if such and such a thing happened, this wouldn't be happening. And it seems sometimes that God's a million miles away. And you're saying, Lord, well, this is what the story's about. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Bible says in that 35th verse, Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how the Lord loved him? And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of Mary, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is the stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you, if you would believe, you would see the glory of the Lord? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to him, Loose him and let him go. The question that we're talking about today is found in that text. We're going to get to that in just a few moments. Take away the stone. What, what, is, what is biblical faith? What, what is biblical faith? I want good faith. I want faith. I want faith to see my life change. I, I, I want faith to walk in the presence of the Lord. I, I want biblical faith. See, it is the ability. You say, well, I got lots of faith. I, can, I got all the faith in the world. I've heard people say this. I got all the faith in the world. Well, let me tell you something. It's the ability to stand strong when the winds of adversity whisper you're wrong. To be able to stand and not move, regardless of what anybody says or says against what you believe. See, it takes, it takes no faith to walk in a rose garden, but it takes all your faith to walk in a barren desert where there seems to be no life, no movement, no results. Amen? Amen. Surely some of you people can relate to this. It has always fascinated me. It always has. It fascinated me that Jesus was taken into a desert, a wilderness, where his ministry began. So that he could learn, so that he could learn in the worst of situations to rely on the Father. Now, I don't like those barren wilderness places. Do you? No. But see, that's where you have to be to learn to rely on God and His Word. Amen. Not in a rose garden. That's easy. Everybody can walk in a rose garden. Everybody, when everything's going right, man, that, that's cool. That's easy. But it's when everything seems to be going wrong. And it seems like there's walls all around you. Everything. All the news is bad. But you know, in this story of Jesus walking into the wilderness, is like, as you know from Luke chapter 4, don't ever forget this. It wasn't the word alone that saved him. A lot of people will say, well, uh, Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. He said that three times. But let me also mention to you that before he went into the desert, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Bible very clearly says, says it, that after he was filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God led him into the wilderness. Now we're not talking about we're not talking about just faith to heal. We're not just talking about that today. Not faith.